Hey, hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and in this video we're going to look at if we can mix art and combat robots uh, at the same time. So very recently I was watching a slow-mo guys video where they had some textures that they spun at high speed and they flung the ink out of them and I was like, combat robots spin things at high speed all the time. This is something that we could possibly do, but I immediately hit a problem with this. When compared to combat robot weapons, textures are like huge and also incredibly lightweight. So this is a 50 gram weapon bar and this is like a two or three gram marker, texture, whatever you want. So these make the most sense to fit onto an ant weight combat robot, but they are too light and too large uh, for this application. So. I might have to get a bit interesting here. I did go out and try and find some smaller ones. These are the smallest I can find, which even though they are inside the uh, radius or the diameter of my weapon, they are still pretty massive and they're also still fairly lightweight. So this is gonna take a little bit of uh, doing, I think. Thankfully, I have a solution. This. It might work. This is an overhead bar spinner chassis that I designed for a different project and that video may still come out yet, uh, but it was designed to be as thin and as flat as possible. And as you can see, it's actually uh, about the same width as this, but it's gonna take smaller wheels. So the whole idea is we can run a weapon over the top like this. Hopefully we can fit some pens or some markers in some kind of orientation. So let's get some weapon bars printed and get some electronics in this guy. For now, we have our 3D prints. We have a top cover, so I'll just quickly kind of have to jam the top cover a little bit, but then the weapon goes on and will actually spin, hopefully. Uh, we might need a little bit of glue on the front bar there, but That'll be all right. Then, so these guys, I actually, I designed two, which are the same size. They're actually pretty monster for ant weight weapons, but they're what we've got. So I've got two, one for the skinny pens, oh, one for the skinny markers like that. So one there, one there. And then I also did this other one for the fat markers. So one there and one there. I'm going to get to a point where it doesn't want to go any further. Like that. There we go. Haha. -ha. Although I probably need to pull the motor out of this to actually tighten that properly. So this is going to make a bit of a mess. So I have set myself up properly. On my test box, I have plastic wrap on the underside of the Lexan. I've also taped paper around the edges, so it will make some nice artwork out of this first test. And on the floor, I've made sure that there is a nice boundary, just in case any kind of flying droplets go uh, try and get in between the crack between the plate or the bottom plate and the edges of the arena. So we should be fine on that. Let's uh, throw a robot in it. It works! In fact, we've made art. Kind of. <laughs> some of it's okay, it's, it's not too bad, and some of it is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, I've got a lot of markers left over though, and uh, I still have the robot. Robot is working totally fine. 
Uh, the thing that I'm kind of annoyed at though is that the control I have over texture is uh, very limited. So I only get a little strip down the bottom here. I think we might need a vert. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. Um, this has been interesting though. So I'm finding that varying the throttle, I can like control how much texture is going out. So I could actually do proper art with this. Um, the big fat textures do actually have a lot more ink in them. So I have to be very careful with these. If I go too quick with these, they just kind of spray everywhere and leave globby messes on the pages, which yeah, I'm, I wasn't intending on making this a proper art video, but I guess that's what we're doing now. <laughs> um, also, the floor of my arena, I think is actually the best work of art of the lot. I think it looks the best. It's certainly the messiest and has a nice like fanny kind of spray going on, which I find kind of cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, I think now that we're talking ser well, serious, well, serious. <laughs> Art stuff. Let's build a vert. Cool. So we have a vert weapon. This weapon is uh, smaller in radius than the overhead bar spinner. And I've basically taken the inspiration from the thin pen version of this and stacked these pens side to side like this. So they sit next to each other, which gives me that smaller radius, which is going to be important for a vert. So I've just taken this chassis and kind of verted it a little bit. But as you can see, this thing is still pretty massive in comparison to the vert. So we have an upright. <laughs> sit this little upright in here. I'll have to glue and screw that in, but then that will give us enough, hopefully, to be able to spin up the pen weapon at the front of it. This is going to look wild. All right, let me get some electronics into this thing. Oh man, this thing took a long time. The electronics are actually really stacked um, badly inside of here. The electronic stack up I use just has way too much wire. And even though this is a thicker chassis on the whole than the other design, uh, yeah, I was still struggling to get the wires into this. Also, I need to tape those wires back there so they don't get caught in the spinner. But you can see we have the spinner in place and it looks kind of terrifying. This thing feels quite weighty though. I'm gonna have, I'll, I wanna double check this because this one does make weight. In fact, uh, this chassis is like 96 grams or something. So I could put a 55 gram spinner on it and it would actually work, which is kind of crazy. And these textures are not 55 grams. But this guy, I'm gonna throw some hot glue on the wheels so that the wheels stay in place. And then I think we should add some textures and uh, do some more art.
and my camera died. Uh, so you didn't get to see the end of this little piece, but there it is. Um, the vert is spectacular. This thing is way easier to control and point and kind of make more structured arts, I guess. It was a, it's a lot of fun. It is so much fun to drive the vert around and spin it up and throw ink everywhere. It's great. I love it. <laughs> uh, so I started with the kind of purple and blue idea again because the one that I did with the horizontal kind of reminded me of that like pattern that you used to see on cups and things. Uh, so I threw that on again. Uh, I quite like that one. That one's pretty cool. Uh, this one that I've purposely done in the four different colors is pretty cool. And then there's also a couple of others that are just like splash paper that were in the arena that also looked pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. That has gone quite well. Um, but I did make two of these. I did put them both on separate uh, control systems. And that was because I was intending to paint each other, like to have them paint each other by spinning their weapons with both of them in the arena at the same time. But the vert has kind of painted itself already. The three attempts or the three different sets of pens going onto that thing have just sprayed it, especially the top plate. It's been sprayed with ink. Uh, I'm actually a little bit worried, to be honest, about opening that thing because the lid is not quite airtight. So I have a feeling there's going to be some pools of ink inside the vert when I get there. Eh, well, we'll look at that later. <laughs> um, but, so the vert really doesn't need painting, but I still want to paint the overhead spinner. So I think we are actually going to power them both up at the same time, put them into the arena and get them spinning. And then, yeah, hopefully throw paint back and forth at each other. And I might throw some paper off on the walls too and make a bit more artwork. Why not, hey? All right, let's do this again. So it's now the next day, I left these overnight to dry, but they look awesome. I love the way this has come out. The textures kind of like merging colors together and bleeding down layer lines and stuff. It just looks awesome. It looks better than I was expecting it to, that's for sure. Also a couple of interesting notes, apparently when you mix red and orange, uh, sorry, red and green texture colors, they become black. Who knew? Definitely not me. Uh, and also when I first ran the vert, I was running it with yellow and orange and spinning it up as you normally would with a vert, but that didn't actually spray ink onto the top of the overhead. So I ended up switching it the other way around. And when I put in the new textures, it became a downward spinner, which did actually throw ink all over the top of the robot. Beautiful. Uh, I now also have a stack of artwork uh, some of this is really cool. This one in particular, which has just got colors going everywhere from the jewel spinners in the arena. Oh, just great. Uh, but of course, I have two spinners. What happens if they hit each other? Not much, as it turns out. Uh, mostly because these weapons have no weight in them at all. Uh, we did crack a pen 
Here, uh, the green pen does actually have a nice chip in it, and I think it's uh, the purple one. I thought I saw there was a mark on one of these pens where it actually did the damage. Uh, so it was a little bit less, like, it was a bit anticlimactic, especially compared to what I was expecting, but uh, it was still cool. Uh, anyway, I think I'm gonna end this video here. This was a lot of fun to do. I've had just a crazy amount of fun doing this. The vert in particular, I'm going to keep the vert set up as a pen spinner, and I might even use it for more art projects in the future. Don't, don't really know. The overhead will come back in a future video with a very different weapon setup on it, uh, but we'll leave that for now and uh, move on with that later on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did, and I will see you in the next one.